This is a contour plot. It can be used to represent three-dimensional data. You've probably seen contour lines on a map used to represent the height of hills, mountains and valleys. This is the same idea, except we're using colour to represent the highs and lows by filling in the contours. Contour plots can be useful for non-spatial data as well. If we have three variables, and we want to know how one of them varies across all the possible combinations of the other two, for example, studying the rate of infection across all heights and weights in the population, then a contour plot can show information that two separate scatter plots just can't. This code produces a plot on the previous slide. This is just a function that returns an interesting shape. In practice, it'll be replaced by your measured values. Note that it has to return something for every possible combination of x and y. In the case where you read in data, that means you need an observation for every input. For example, terrain height at every value of latitude and longitude. This part is a bit complicated. If you haven't seen it yet, the numpy linspace function just returns 50 evenly spaced samples between minus 1 and 1. The complicated part is mesh grid. If we show the output, it should be clear what's going on. Let's use an example with fewer points for clarity. The list shown in green is the output of linspace with 9 samples. Calling mesh grid will, according to the documentation, make nd coordinate arrays for vectorized evaluations of nd scalar vector fields over nd grids given one dimensional coordinate arrays x1, x2, and so on up to xn. This is very confusing. But if you just print out capital X and capital Y, you can see what's going on. Capital X consists of 11 copies of Y, and capital Y is 9 copies of X but rotated 90 degrees. In matrix language, the array is transposed. Plotting x and y, we see that we have produced a grid of points. This is what the matplotlib contour plot expects as x and y input. Back to the code. This line generates the observations. Again, hopefully you are reading in real data that has been sampled on a grid. It's very common to have sampled data and performed a model fit or an interpolation. This generates a function f which can return a value for every possible input of x and y. We then call the contour function with the x, y and z arrays. The levels parameter tells the contour f function how many contours to draw and we specify another named color map. We also plot a color bar. Don't forget to do this. This is the output. We can add some more nice features to the contour plot. The contour function draws contour lines like you would see on a terrain map, and the C-label function annotates the contours to give us the numeric values corresponding to each line. This is the result of the code on the previous page. Note the dashed lines indicate negative values. A heat map is another way to display data that has two indices. It's a very common way to visualize matrices, like the correlation and confusion matrices we'll cover in later sections. Here's the code that generates the previous plot. This part just makes some dummy data. The important thing to notice is the shape of the data object. It's a square array or a length 5 list of length 5 lists. Of course, you can also use NumPy arrays for this. We plot the array using the imshow function. This is a really powerful matplotlib function that lets us display data as an image. It basically paints the individual pixels in the figure, which will then be scaled up to whatever size you set in the configuration options. This is the result. A color map, in particular Viridis, has been applied to the data in our array, and the 5x5 five five grid we input has been visualized with a little square for each element. Of course, we can customize this extensively. This is the same code with some customization. We've changed the color map and added some interpolation. This will attempt to smooth out the values when scaling up. For example, here we only have data for 25 pixels, which have blown up into a few hundred pixels. With interpolation on, Imshow smoothly blends the colors as it resizes the image. When visualizing matrices, we don't usually want to do this, but let's just see what happens with it turned on. Finally, we move the origin to the lower left. By default, the origin is set in the upper left. This is all stuff we've seen before. We add some labels and a color bar, and this is the result. The main change is due to the interpolation smoothing out all the individual cell values. If you're trying to visualize a matrix, please don't do this. But if you have some other kind of image data, you might want to use interpolation to improve the image quality when resizing, for example. Now we add a third spatial dimension. This is a 3D scatter plot. This is how you make it, and the procedure won't be surprising. Here we're creating the figure and axis separately. Usually we've used the subplots function to do this. We could also use the subplots function here, have a look back at how we made the polar plots, but this also works fine. The important thing is that we use the 3D projection argument when creating the axes. We then generate some random data and make a 3D plot using the scatter 3D function. This has all the same customization options as the regular scatter plot. This is the result. There are 3D versions of other plots like line and bar, which you can investigate yourself. Let's see how to do something a little fancy, a 3D contour plot. In more or less the same way as the previous contour plot, we use mesh grid to create the sampling points in the XY plane, then figure out the Z values. The main difference is that we use the contour 3D version of the function, and we also set the initial view. When creating the plot, an initial camera position is chosen. This function lets us move it so that we have a better view. In general, for 3D plots, I recommend just generating the plot in interactive mode, rotating it by hand to get the desired angle, and then saving the figure from the interactive window. The final figure looks like this. Finally, we'll look at generating surfaces in 3D. 
If we have a nice rectangular sampling grid in the xy plane, then making a surface is simple, but if we don't, then we have to do something called triangulation. This is the code to generate a surface, and the crucial part is highlighted. The plot triserve function takes the x, y, and z data and creates a surface by joining the points in triangles. This is the output. If we had a regular grid, the surface would be a lot smoother, but this is pretty good. There's more to 3D plots, but examples here should cover most cases you're likely to encounter in practice.